new all time highs today and then the market sells off. What's going on guys? Hope you are doing well. The market's starting to pick up. We've been pretty quiet to start this week off. And so there hasn't been much to say, but I think this is a good spot that we're at after uh, Tesla earnings just came out. We had Netflix yesterday. Not that those necessarily are massive for what the s and is going to do, but it starts to give us a little bit more, you know, and then we get some more movement going on. And so I wanted to at least come in here and, and, and talk about what we got going on. So obviously, yes, SPY made a new all-time high uh, today as this video is being posted. It hit a high up near. I got close to 490. It actually just shy of 489 is what we hit today. And then pretty much filled the gap back down, meaning that it gapped up and opened all the way up here at the top of this red candle and then closed at the bottom of the red candle, which pretty much is right on top of right where the highs were from yesterday. Uh, so the gap overnight was decent. And then we filled it and fell off to the downside as the day went on. So that is interesting, at least to note, sets the stage. Uh, we are seeing QQQ kind of doing a similar thing. Didn't fully fill the gap back down, but very, very strong there. There's a really strong sector that has been really ripping cues to the upside or helping cues go to the upside. And that's been semiconductors. Uh, SMH, again, continues to just shine is just all we can say. It keeps on pushing and pushing and pushing SMH with a new all-time high. It's actually approaching $200 now, which is kind of crazy. Uh, inside of this, you had NVIDIA, NVDA hit a nearly a 630 today. Yeah, it got close. Got a f about $2 off of 630 bucks, uh, up about 25% from the breakout to new all-time highs that occurred back on January 8th. So literally like two, two weeks, two and a half, a little over two weeks ago, which is kind of crazy to think about. So Despite the strength there, if you jump over to the Dow and the Russell, you're not going to see the same strength. The Dow is technically like in breakout mode or it broke out, but it's now back testing the breakout. So we'll want you'll want to see if this ends up holding and bouncing uh, to see if we get strength there. And then the Russell uh, clearly not nearly as strong as this has had some wonkiness. It's bounced up from the lows, but it has not made a new high of the year or I guess not of the year. Uh, it hasn't made a new high of the recent rally from the past couple of months, uh, which means small caps are still not the vehicles of choice. Uh, mid caps, they're not the vehicles of choice. It seems like NVIDIA, AMD, uh, and semiconductors, and then there's a bunch of other stocks as well. IBM had earnings, but this has been an absolute monster as well. The past couple of months, very, very strong stock. It actually had uh, closed the day at around 173. But if you jump over the four hour chart, you'll see that it currently trades at 182, 183 now in the after hours, which is pretty impressive. So all considered, that's what's setting the stage. Uh, I do want to jump over to look at the 10 year because this has been slowly but surely inching its way up. It is now trending up uh, from the end of last year. And so for, I guess, the entirety of January, this has been trending up. So we can't deny that. We do have some news and some catalysts coming up. Uh, one of those is going to be uh, Thursday. We have GDP, preliminary quarter four GDP for 2023. We got jobless claims. Then beyond that, on Friday, we've got PCE data, which is also important when it comes to inflation and the Fed and Powell and all that stuff, which we have next week when they have their interest rate decision, which is expected to hold rates where they are. Very, very high chance that occurs. As time has gone on, the chance of holding rates where they are into the March or the, yeah, the March meeting, that has actually increased. So as we speak right now, there's actually a pretty good chance that rates are going to stay where they're at until May, which is a little bit of an adjustment from where things may have been just a couple of weeks, even a couple of months ago. So that all is you know, playing into it. The dollar had a downside day to day, but then we saw price action move right back up into the consolidation that it's been sitting in the past couple of days. So not a ton to talk about there. Now, the big story is going to be how this week finishes off. Yes, we had Tesla earnings. I'll pull that up quickly. But how this week finishes off and do we see continuation of the upside or do we see, you know, some pullback start to occur? Tesla is currently down about 3% in, pre in uh, post or I guess after hours trading. After its earnings, it needs to move about 6.5%. Uh, for any options to have value if you're playing weeklies or this week's expiration, which is kind of crazy, but it needs to move quite a bit. 
the implied move was around 6.3% from what I saw. So keep that in mind if, you know, not that if you were in or out, well, it doesn't matter if you're in, but for the people who are playing, you know, this Friday's options, if you were right on the direction, but the stock only moves 2%, you're going to end up losing, which is going to hurt you. So just be careful when it comes to that. Uh, we're watching Tesla closely, but it's been weak. And so it continues to stay weak. That could reverse. If that does reverse, we'll have that video. We'll have a video on Saturday that will talk more about where things are, how things are being digested as we push into the final days of January, the first month of the year. And to be, uh, end things off with a bang, we've got the Fed meeting or the Fed rate decision on Wednesday as well. So that'll be interesting. Not that it, we're expecting anything crazy there, but it's more so what does Powell say? What hints, what do we get in that meeting that potentially give us signals for what is to come? So pretty quick update here. Not a lot to talk about, but this weekend's video, we'll have a lot more charts to dive into as things start to settle and we start digesting some of these moves a bit more. So leave any chart requests in the comment section below. The platform we use here is TradingView. You can get $15 off the platform. Link to that in the video description box, as well as a lot more that came from that could be used to help and benefit you in your own trading. Thanks so much guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.